Well, it seems Borderlands 4 is being announced after Embracer Group has now sold Gearbox to take two. Uh, this is a very interesting story considering the writer for Borderlands 3 just came out and pretty much called all the gamers that are out there in the market bigots. So we'll have to take a look to see where this is really lying. Well, a little while ago, I spoke about this, how the Borderlands 3 writer pretty much drove the final nail into the franchise, calling gamers bigots and everything under the sun. And now it seems a very shortly after that, they have been sold from Embracer Group to take two. They buy Gearbox from Embracer, it confirms development of new Borderlands game. So is this Borderlands 4? Is this going to be something else? A new homeworld game is also in development. So Gearbox is still going out and around. They're, they're trying to rebrand and redo the Borderlands games shortly after that take. Embracer Group has officially divested Gearbox Entertainment, selling it, uh, selling the division to Take-Two Interactive for $460 million. I believe they bought them for $1.3 billion. So Embracer Group once again taking a bath on the fire sale that continues to hit the market right now from them. In a press release, Embracer shared that they're divesting Gearbox uh, Software, Gearbox Montreal, Gearbox Studio Quebec, and franchises Borderlands, Tiny Tina's Wonderland, Homeworld, Risk of Rain, Brothers at Arms, and Duke Nukem. Embracer will retain the rights of Gearbox Publishing San Francisco, formerly Perfect World Entertainment, and which, uh, and which it plans to rename. The publishing rights to Remnant, Hyper Light Breaker and other unannounced games, Cryptic Studios, Lost Boys Interactive, and Captured Dimensions, all of its retained assets will be in integrated in other parts of Embracer Group. The sale is expected to close by the end of June, so a few months down the line. It's a very interesting version that th this really is at that point. Gearbox will join Take-Two's 2K division and will continue to be led by CEO and founder Randy Pitchford. Currently, Gearbox has, has both a new Borderlands and new Homeworld game in development, as well as one exciting intellectual product, a separate press release. Notably, the full purchase price at $460 will be paid to Embracer Group uh, and take to shares rather than cash. So they're taking shares. Interesting. Uh, for comparison, Embracer originally purchased Gearbox for $363 million, half that cash and uh, half the newly issued Embracer Group shares with an additional consideration of $1.015 billion, bringing that total to $1.3 billion. To pay out to Gearbox hit certain targets within six years. So the, that's where they are. But now, of course, Gearbox is laying off staff following Embracer breakup. At least three employees and countless others have been let go from Borderlands Studio as it prepares to jump ship over to Take Two. Remember, this sale isn't closing till June, and they're already they're already trimming trimming their ranks. Hours after re revealing the split from Embracer to join Take Two, Gearbox Software is laying so off some staff. Senior user research investigator Jules Verne plainly stated she just lost her job. PR manager Jennifer Locke revealed she's also been laid off along with countless others. Hmm, I wonder if the PR took a hit from that writer and they just went, you know what? You're gone. You're done. Because we're being sold anyway so let's just let's just clear house let's just clear house because they have all the reason to at this point it really was a dream come true working for the team i'm incredibly grateful layoffs are fairly common in the aftermath of a merger but that often occurs weeks or months after the ink is dry not a handful of hours later no in this case i think uh i think what happened there the backlash over over the tweets, uh, over calling gamers bigots, over d demonstrating your base market of gamers, and uh, then also bringing back up how poorly written Borderlands 3 was, I think they're just saying, no, we're done. We're done. You guys just, just get out of here. The 460 million DLCs Borderlands developer joined the Grand Theft Auto publisher along with its offshoots in Montreal and Quebec. Gearbox is taking key franchise with it along with Tiny Tina's Wonderland, Homeworld, and others. 
Uh, but they're retaining San Francisco, which we've already gone over, and Randy Pitchfork stays as CEO. So this is a very interesting thing to see happen. Where it is right now, Sam still has his job with Gearbox as the narrative design, so it'll be an interesting story in the long run to see what direction it goes from here on out. But you know, this is what we covered in the other video where now it's all about the skin color of the character designs for the games. And down on the third tweet there, uh, just saying 99% of people spewing this crap have never created a single thing in their lives that they're proud of. And the rest is just straight up bigots. Well, you know what? I, I, I'm very proud of what I've created. I, I'm very happy what we've created here with the channel. Uh, you can subscribe today because we're gonna keep, I'm gonna keep making videos as long as I can and not worry about what happens out there. I'm gonna continue working and doing the best I can. And I've created, I've built things with my hands. So yeah. I'm very proud of things I've built. Well, where does this all leave everything? It looks like Borderlands might be under Grand Theft Auto 6. I'll have to wait to see where that really does go because they're two different games. Uh, could we see a Borderlands crossover into Grand Theft Auto 6? Could we see a little bit of that tie-in because it does have that sort of, the original games had that knack to, to capture the idea of it. I know a lot of people are hyped over Grand Theft Auto 6, but are we really, are we really? It's, we're in that market space right now where things, where games, these AAA games, you gotta take it back, take it with a grain of salt, then look at it upon reveal and see what comes out of it. Will Borderlands 4 be a success? Will this actually reinvigorate the franchise? Will this be something that brings it back in form? I highly doubt it. We're, we're probably going to see another company sink a ton of money into this uh, franchise. And then after the movie, watch it fall flat on its face. Remember, the Borderlands movie is coming out. And this could be something to help propel that forward. Because I'm pretty sure Embracer would be part, part of that movie. So if they want an actual return investment. So... Why don't we make this big sale? Sell this off. We have nothing going for us right now with Embracer. We're on a fire sale. We need money. And once the movie hits the big screen, we're going to have a little bit of a cash if it does well. There are a lot of things with that Borderlands movie doesn't look good. It, it looks a very, very strange with, the, with going the form of Tiny Tina being... Uh, one of the main characters in it, it's going to be kind of strange in that sense because she was always the backdrop and then the video game came out with her name on it as a Dungeons and Dragons style adventure. Not so much that she was the the one of the main protagonists and the rest of the cast. I, I've gone over my thoughts on that Borderlands movie as well, which I'll probably link somewhere here. So take a look at that as well. I've been your proud Canadian Phoenix in the shadow. I'm signing off here. Have yourselves a great day. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I will see you again very soon.